And I remember, you know, I had <laughs> my mom and my sister with me and I turned to my, my right side and I see Madonna. And I was like, mom, <laughs> is this Madonna <laughs> right next to me? You know, she's like, hey, I'm like, oh my God, man, you know, where am I? So I had a journalist call me once and he said, well, um, let me put it this way. You either give me an interview right now or you will be giving me one anyway. Closed the phone and then I read two whole pages. Just made up. Made up interview, yeah. We had this onset chemistry, which, you know, I think shows, mm -hmm. you know, we, we naturally felt really uh, good around each other's company. We were, you know, having these internal competitions to be the best couple, to be the best dancers, to, you know, look the best. So I told them and, you know, I was told on the phone, well, this might lose you the role now. Mike will have to see you and, you know, we'll make a decision. Well, I was wondering, you became Victor Crumb at, at age like 17. Uh, and we... That's not right. No? I what... was born to be Victor Crumb, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, so that kind of answers my question. Why do you think they chose you? Well, <laughs> you know, taking the joke aside, uh, the, the, I think they were casting in four different countries and it just so happened that I was late in my school for a, a registration, bumped into the casting agent and she saw something in me. Mm -hmm. um, went further to show uh, Mike Newell, the mm -hmm. director of the fourth movie, and then he insisted on seeing me live. So I ended up in his office and mm -hmm. we did a, a casting obviously with him and he saw Victor Crumb in me. So. Uh, and do you remember any specific task he had for you during Oh, the yes. I remember very clearly uh, the whole <laughs> um, process of, of casting. Uh, one thing he made me do is imagine I was in a circle and there was a train going in circles around me, like crazy speed, very loud and noisy. And um, I had to save, you know, someone I love. In this case, uh, you know, he asked me, who do you love? I said, no, my mom, my family. Mm -hmm. He said, you need to save them and you need to give a message through the train. So I'm in the middle of this loud train and, you know, we're in this super quiet office <laughs> where all you could hear is people on computers and, you know, his office was in the middle of this big place, really quiet. And I was like, Mike, do you understand what you asking me to do? He said, go for it, my boy. So um, I screamed my lungs out, you know, I was like, wah. And then he said, I'm going to snap my fingers and you will be in love. So I was like, okay, he snapped his fingers and I was like, oh, holidays coming up. I will be going home. Uh, mama is going to cook some good food. And you know, he was like, very good, very good. Then he was like, now you need to get super angry. Like imagine something that, and I was in trouble at school. You know, I had some trouble with, <laughs> you know, one teacher and I was like, now is the yeah, time. Imagine I, her. All I asked is, you know, can I speak in Bulgarian? And he oh. said, yes, go for it. Oh. So luckily, only I know what I said. <laughs> um, but I had foam dripping from my mouth. I was really angry, you know, oh my, my veins. And because I was in trouble and it wasn't fair. So oh. I took out all my bad energy. And I think this helped, you know, mm -hmm. he said, this is what I want, you know. And do you remember the specific moment when you learned that you got the part? Because like Daniel Radcliffe has this story about him being in a bath and, and playing with a duck or whatever, <laughs> when, his, when his parents told him, hey, there was a phone call. Do mm -hmm. you remember your moment? Uh, yes, I remember very clearly. Uh, it was one week, I think, after I met Mike. And at the end of the casting, he said, oh, you were really good, but don't put your hopes up too high because we have other people to see. And, you know, if we don't call you back within two weeks, da, 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 da. So I walked out and I was like, oh, I was so happy. I, mm. I was sure I have it. And then he said, he pushed me down. You know, he said, calm down, relax, sit down. So uh, later on when they called, I was like, yes, super. You know, this is really cool. But we were having exams coming up, very important, you know, A-levels. I remember, you know, when, when they said we would like you know, to have you on board Harry Potter and be Victor Crumb. And I was like, you know, I expressed some happiness, but I wasn't doing somersaults and backflips and breaking <laughs> things. And, you know, there was a moment of silence on the phone. And then, you know, they asked, Stan, are you not happy? I said, what do you mean I'm not happy? I'm very happy. Yes, but usually even for an extra on Harry Potter, you will hear screaming and running and breaking things. I said, I'm very happy. 
but I do have exams coming up, <laughs> so I need to be concentrated. And I had no idea what you know this was all about mm. uh, at the time, but great memories. Oh, and did anyone believe you? Because it must have taken quite some time from the moment you got the part <laughs> until the movie was in cinemas. And I guess you were telling people that, hey, I'm gonna be on Harry Potter. Did they believe you? Uh, well, I was still at school. Um, so yeah, the news spread like, <laughs> like a, an explosion, you know, within hours. And people, some believed, some didn't, uh, even back home, you know, my mom didn't believe. I told her I'll be in a movie, you know, this and that. And she was like, yeah, right, whatever. And then I was on holiday back home and, you know, we were using a fax. My first ever ticket from Warner Brothers came through a fax, fax machine. Uh, so yeah, I showed my mom the, the ticket and she was like, this is real. I said, yeah, hello. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's, it took some time for people oh, to believe. And what about the hair? Because, because Victor Crumb has very, you know, sharp, short hair. Well, I had, um, you know, I had a teen sort of mm -hmm. spikes and, you know, I had some, some hair, but we had a month's holiday. You know, April was, was off and I went home and the first thing I did was shave my head. I was like, I need fresh hair. For some mm -hmm. reason I said, I'll just shave off, you know, bad energy, old energy, just, just fresh, you know, I want fresh hair. And two, three days later, they call me, you know, from Warner Brothers, they say, well, we need you in to do the costume fittings for the shark and da da da. And I was like, uh, okay, but I did a uh, little change. And I was like, How little? And I didn't know at the time, you know, once you get cast, you don't touch anything. Beard, well, I didn't have much, but you mm -hmm. know, beard, hair, anything regarding your looks. I had made a drastic change, literally shave, you know, like zero. So I told them and, you know, I was told on the phone, well, this might lose you the role now. Mike will have to see you and, you know, we'll make a decision. You're not supposed to touch your looks. We like, you know, what we've seen and now this will take time to grow back and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh. you know, I have my ticket. Now everything is starting and then all of a sudden I'm going to lose because I cut my hair. So um, first thing, as soon as I arrived in London, first thing, Mike's office, and I remember his reaction. He looked at me, he said, exactly what I was missing. And I looked at him and, you know, I, well, I was worried I was going to lose the role. You know, I was all excited now. And, and he said, all the Durmstrangs need to be like this. And some of them were models, you know, they had long hairs and... I was very hated at the beginning, but they got paid every time they cut their hair. So at the end, by the end of the movie, they were like praising me. Yeah, I like, think oh, so. <laughs> thank you, Stan. I bought a car. And I was like, yeah, just yeah. for my hair, you know, every every centimeter got me, you know, a new tire. Well, you know, I had to oh. cut my hair literally every day. <sighs> to keep it the same length. Same length, same oh shape, same everything. Every night. Harry Potter was your, your acting debut. You know, you've never, never acted before. That must have been a little bit strange. Well, on a professional level. As a professional, level, yeah. yeah, yeah, as a professional. In life, you act all the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how nervous were you on, on your first day? Um, well, I was uh, still trying to find out where I was. Um, so I was nervous. And the first uh, scene that we did was in the maze when Harry runs through Victor and Cedric. And, you know, we have this little fight. So everyone, you know, Robert and myself, we were very new and thrown into this. You know, the maze was built physically there and it was very misty and dark. And, you know, on action, we were like, what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> and I remember Mike coming in and, you know, he just said, yo, boys, you know, you just play with this. Have fun, enjoy. And he started rolling on the floor, on the ground, getting himself dirty with us and throwing us at the hedges. And he said, enjoy this. This is like a playground. So all the nervousness all of a sudden just poof, went away and, you know, ever since, it felt very comfortable, you know, having a, a director that knew how to bring out uh, the ease uh, of acting, you know. Uh, he said we, we have natural talent, which is something that he was looking for. 
um, became very easy. But I remember the first day everyone was stressing, like, you know, costumes. And I didn't even know um, what a stunt double was. I had some scenes where my stunt double was meant to be used and I insisted on doing my own stunts because I thought that he will be seen on the screen. I said, no, I want to be seen, so let me smash my head 25 times on the ground. And yeah, when did that and then they explained, you know, they're like, Stan, you don't need to do this. I'm like, no, 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 I want to be seen. You know, I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm tough, I can do this. And they're like, no, your stunt double is doing all the dangerous things. Uh, but you will be the face that will be seen. And I was like, huh. <laughs> so, yeah. And did, did, did anyone give you any good advice on, on acting? Yes, advice, um, obviously, you know, you have super big names from the industry, you know, Brendan Gleeson, Miranda Richards, and all of them. Um, and I remember one day, uh, the entrance to the maze, it, that, that maze seems to be haunting me. Uh, the <laughs> entrance to the maze, uh, we had four cameras. And I was, you know, sitting there in a, in a corner thinking which camera is my camera. And then Peja came along and Karkaroff, and he's like, oh, my boy. You know, he was like, I'm his son with his, uh, you know, remember his nail thing. He was always like, oh. <laughs> so he was like, oh, my son, what is up? <laughs> and I told him, you know, there's four cameras. I'm wondering which one is mine so I can concentrate more. And he gave me probably the best advice. And he said, what's your job? And I was like, well, to, to act, to be Victor Crumb. He said, good. What's the cameraman's job? And I said, to capture the scene. What's the voice people's, you know, the, the sound department's job? And I was like, to capture the sound. So he said, why do you worry about what the camera man has to do? And he said, just ignore them. You know, you do your job, it's their job to capture. Mm -hmm. Sound, vision. And I was like, makes sense, okay. let's go. <laughs> and you know, it, th th this was the moment where I had a lot of weight from my shoulders taken off. Because, you know, you literally just worry about your performance. You don't worry about where the cameras are, if the microphone is stuck good, if, if not. And it takes a lot of pressure off you as an, as an actor. Tohle video je trošku experiment, ve kterém kombinujeme záběry z talk show a z rozhovoru, který jsme si dělali potom. A moc by nás zajímal váš názor na to, jestli takovýhle hybrid je povedený experiment, a nebo jestli se na to radši vykašlat. Tak prosím, pište do komentů. Děkujeme. Was there anything that really surprised you on the set? Not quite surprised me, but I was um, fascinated with Harry Potter specifically, because they built, physically built most of the sets. Hmm. Usually you would have a small chunk and it would be blue, green screen, whatever. For Harry Potter, we had a functioning maze. We had the lake built, the mm -hmm. biggest tank ever built for a movie was yeah. our one. You know, the, the Dragon Stadium, you know, the Quidditch Stadium, all of these things exist. If not fully, then partially. Yeah, I was fascinated by how quickly hmm. they organized, you know, the lake like, ants build it and then all of a sudden you know you come back from work and the next day you see the dragon stadium you know mm. ready it's not it doesn't give you the feel of you know being on a set it's more like i guess that helps acting a lot you know you're having the mm. real environment i think maybe they did it because of all the uh, child actors that it would feel more real to them and they would give better performances possibly but i think you know this gives that unique feel of the movie, yeah. you know, because everything nowadays is CGI and yeah, right. people are, I mean, it looks great, you know, special yeah. effects and all, but a lot of people are, you know, we've had enough of this. We want something yeah. more, more natural, more mm -hmm. real. And we had a real hedge, you know, you, you rub yourself against the hedge and it sticks and, you know, you get scratched. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a different feel. Mm. And what about the, the movie premiere? Because, again, your first movie, your first premiere. Everyone was saying, you know, prepare yourself. This is going to be, you know, one really wild experience. But you cannot prepare yourself for something like this. You know, people were camping for days on Leicester Square, you know, to save a spot to, for the premiere, to, to, to have a glimpse, to see us. And, you know, everything happened so quickly, so, so fast. 
and all of a sudden, you know, we are in the cars and everything is strictly organized. You have PAs running all over the place, media, you know, everything is very strict. Um, and I remember, you know, I had <laughs> my mom and my sister with me and I turned to my, my right side and I see Madonna. And I was like, mom, <laughs> is this Madonna <laughs> right next to me? You know, she's like, hey, I'm like, oh my God, man, you know, where am I? Mm -hmm. So up to that point, you know, we are filming, doing interviews, but you don't really realize what world you're entering, you know, the red carpet and all these superstars on, mm -hmm. on the red carpet with you. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing, you know, Madonna and other people and I was like, wow. Wow. Then, you know, we had a few premieres and I had the, the prime minister, you know, greet me personally. and. <laughs> like like the Bulgarian? Yes, or? yes. Oh. Back home. And you, you don't expect this as a kid, you know, is 20 years old and you're having all these honors and, you know, people greeting and, you know, emotions. People were mm. crying. Back home was a big thing. Yeah. Because the premiere was uh, actually a suggestion by me. I went <laughs> to Mike and I spoke to him. I said, why why don't we do a, you know, a premiere in Bulgaria? This, this is a big deal for the country mm. and you know, there's not many uh, Hollywood premieres that have <laughs> happened in Bulgaria. So you know, I gave Bulgaria the, the first real major Hollywood premiere. Wow. Mike Newell came, Tolka mm -hmm. Safra came, and you could see the audience cry, you know, people had tears and yeah, oh. just incredible moments. Oh. Well, I can imagine if there was a Czech character in Harry Potter, that would be like totally insane. Well, here. the thing is, you know, Victor Crumb is Bulgarian, but when I got cast, they didn't know I was Bulgarian. This is a pure coincidence. You know, Victor Crumb could have been any nationality. I was Bulgarian, so, you know, they actually found out when they had to book my first ticket. And oh, I remember I... them calling me from Warner Brothers and saying, Stan, are you Bulgarian? And I'm like, what do you mean? Am I? Look at my passport. I am. And they're like, do you know Victor Crumb is Bulgarian? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> I was agreeing to everything at the time. You know, I was like, yes, yes. And you know, they were super excited. Oh, I mean, I thought they were looking for an, an authentic, you know, at no, least no, no, authentic Eastern European luck. kid. No. Well, Harry and Crumb actually never speak to each other uh, in the movie. I don't know if you uh, if you do. noticed. The uh, Hallows. Crumb goes and tells him things are going to happen. Really? But we haven't seen that. We haven't seen it, yes. We have, well, we didn't see the scene at all, <laughs> but he does. Oh, so because, yeah, if, if you can tell me more about this, because uh, that's what we, what we spoke about uh, in today's Q&A, that actually there was quite a major scene that you filmed for the Deathly Hollows uh, part yep. one, and then it all got cut. Yeah, so, Bill so, and Fleur's wedding. Yeah, so what all happened in Well, in this that? was, you know, this is when Crumb comes back and delivers the news that, you know, the, the battle is about to, to begin. That, you know, they're coming um, for Hogwarts, basically, you know, uh, Voldemort's army is coming. And yeah, that, that's, that's the only communication they really have. <laughs> um, but David Yates was directing and, you know, he such a lovely director. Uh, he came up with this story, that a new love triangle between Hermione, Ron and uh, Victor. So Victor comes back, gets Hermione back, they do a little dance, you know, it's like reliving the Yule Ball and she's totally enjoying it. While we see, you know, in, in the back, Ron Weasley is super jealous, mm -hmm. like, you know, his face and it was really, really fun to, to do. So because, bad we didn't see that. Well, unfortunately, not all scenes make, you know, the final cut uh, and as you know, the Deathly Hallows part one was, you know, it had a dark vibe descending into more darkness mm. leading up to, you know, the final battle. So it, I mean, from what I understood, it didn't make quite sense to have a big feasty wedding in the middle of all this mm. darkness. And mm. they wanted to build up, you know, yeah. the, so I understand. You oh. also need to remember you have a time slot. So. I know, and those movies were long enough, yeah. <laughs> let's say that. But talking about, about Ron and Hermione relationship, uh, what's your opinion on that? Because there's quite a lot of uh, talking about, uh, about that on the internet, about basically being it quite toxic, you know, the way Ron treats Hermione and being jealous on the time, all the time and, and not being very nice to her. 
What's your opinion as a very unbiased <laughs> person in this triangle? Uh, well, I think, you know, at the end of the day, they, they made the best choice mm. um, to go along together. Uh, of course, Victor would have... I mean, we don't exactly know what sort of relationship they had. Mm. Victor was a bit older, she mm. was a bit younger at the time. And, you know, in, 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 the, in that age gap, that three, four years is, is a huge difference, you know, her being, what, 13 or whatever. 14, I think she was. 13, now, yeah. 14, and then Victor being 17, 18, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that period is a huge gap. Not, yeah. you know, if you're 30 and, you know, she's 26, but... Um, so there was no real development. Victor discovered and introduced her beauty mm -hmm. to all the other boys. Yeah. He showed, you know, he proved that she is, you know, way more than just that nerdy yeah. bookworm knowing everything girl mm. and you know he, he proves it at the Yule Ball when mm. she comes down the stairs you know she's the most beautiful and then everyone is like wow wow <laughs> and of course you know Victor being the superstar in in Quidditch mm -hmm. you know it's it was huge and uh, you know they, they would uh, the, these child friendships you know they always end up sooner or later mm. together yeah, yeah. So they were together from, you know, Ron, Harry and Hermione. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, she should have, you know, gone with Harry. Mm -hmm. She's a lady, you know, let yeah. her choose. <laughs> she wanted the ginger boy, she, she went with him. Ah, good luck with him. Máme radost, že je vás tady s náma čím dál tím víc. A máme pro vás za to malou soutěž. Napište do komentářů heslo Chci na junior a jakmile dosáhneme bájní hranice 1111 odběratelů, vylosujeme jednoho z vás a ten dostane volňásek na akci Comic Con Junior, která se koná v říjnu v Brně. A je to Comic Con pro dospělí, tak jak ho znáte z Prahy, s rozšířeným programem pro děti. Tak hodně štěstí. Emma Watson at that time was already quite a huge star and a lot of people loved her, a lot of boys oh, yeah. loved her. A lot of people had a crush on her. And, and she was a good actress even back then. So I guess that when she looked at you with those, you know, eyes full of love, it must have been a very strange experience, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was really lovely. Um, you know, we clicked from day one. Mm -hmm. with, she was the very, very, very first actor I met, you know, just by chance. <laughs> I was waiting to be taken into Mike, uh, Mike's office and then this curly girl, you know, curly haired girl came in. Oh, hello, uh, I'm Emma, you, you, you know, you, I guess you're Victor Crumb. And we met, you know, mm -hmm. just spontaneously. Mm -hmm. And later on, I found out that this is Hermione, you know, this is Emma. And um, yeah, we clicked straight away and, mm -hmm. you know, we had this. Uh, on set chemistry, which you know, I think shows. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we naturally felt really uh, good around each other's company. We were, you know, having these internal competitions to be the best couple, to be the best dancers, to you know, look the best. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this I think. Um, obviously, you know, she's a great professional, mm -hmm. so she was there what three movies before I was. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but, uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll give a lot of credit to Mike because he was the one I remember saying, you know, he's like the Baloo bear, you know, from the Jungle Book. <laughs> he would come and take Hermione, I mean, take Emma and be like, oh, this is how I want you to dance with her and, you know, spin her around. And I was sitting to the side, I'm like, oh, you're like double my size, man. You know, <laughs> twisting. He's like, you the man, you lead. And I'm like, OK. And then, you know, we laugh and then we just repeat what he does. And just amazing. Mm. Hermione and Crum continued to correspond through through letters. Was there any kind of communication between the two of you? Like, have you have you invited her for summer in Bulgaria, like Victor Crum did? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we've we've met a few times, you know, um, in England, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, everyone went, you know, their yeah. separate ways and. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard when you live in different areas mm. to, you know, stay in touch. And then, of course, she, you know, she's a different, different league um, yeah. to what we are. We can allow ourselves more to be out in the public and, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy just normal everyday life while, you know, imagine Emma walking yeah. in, in a shop, yeah. you know, everyone will be like... Well, with me, the, they take yeah. time to recognize, like, is this the guy? Oh, maybe he's not. <laughs> so we have a little more freedom. Mm -hmm. 
but do you do you still get recognized or it's more like people would look at you and i know you from somewhere but you know surprisingly uh <laughs> when you least expect is when you get most recognized mm -hmm. like you know um on a flight for example i'm wearing a hat i'm having my own zone and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden the entire plane wants a selfie with me waiting for me to wake up um, and this happened recently <laughs> i was you know straight sleep from the moment i stepped onto the plane fell asleep until you know we started descending and then mm -hmm. the stewardess was waiting she's like you know what i'm going to ask now <laughs> And I was like, I have absolutely no idea. I just opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. I thought she was going to ask because, you know... You put your tray down no, and no, get no, your... No, meal or something, you know. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I don't want no meal, no nothing. I saw a bottle of water next to me. Uh -huh. I'm like, I'm happy with this. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, no, can I have a selfie? I'm a big <laughs> fan. And I'm like, how the hell did you recognize me? And she's mm -hmm. like, you've been sleeping the whole time. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. So she was watching you sleep, I well, guess. Yeah. Oh, a little bit stalkery. Uh. She was, uh, yeah, well, the yeah. steward as well, her yeah. colleague. Yeah, hard to blame her. Well, uh, popularity is certainly a nice thing sometimes, but it has a downside. And for example, in the, in the movie, there was this Rita Skeeter character who, who wrote all of these lies about, about Victor Crumb and Hermione and, and Ron and Harry Potter. Uh, did you have any any kind of this tabloid uh, negative oh, yeah, experience? It still goes on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've read all sorts of stuff about me and you know made up stories. I had a journalist call me once, and uh, he said, "You are now going to give me an interview." And I said, "Well, first of all, I don't know who the hell you are. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I don't know what, who told you and what makes you believe that I will give you an interview. I mean, what media introduce yourself?" And he said, well, um, let me put it this way. You either give me an interview right now or you will be giving me one anyway. So I was like, well, have a good day. Close the phone. And then I read two whole pages. Just made up. Made up interview, yeah. So he was right. He said, you're either going to give me or you will give it anyway. So you know, it was crazy. like quotes and, you know, as if I had given a real interview. This, this is part of being, oh. Oh. being in that business. Hmm. Well... The nice thing about being being popular and, and famous is having various things that look like you. Like Victor Crumb had his uh, chocolate frog cart, yeah. uh, and and uh, also there are like minifigures and Lego minifigures and, and pop figures. Do you collect them? Oh, I have them all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have them all from oh. keychains to you name it. Wow. No, so at the beginning we had no merchandise, mm -hmm. you know, for a long time, and then all of a sudden they they start bringing. Lego sets and, you know, it's really cool seeing myself as a Lego, you know, Lego figure or, you know, those pop mm -hmm. figures yeah. and, you know, all these things that keep popping up. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> and then you see kids, you know, running around with them and like, do you know, this is me. Oh. <laughs> and then, you know, yeah, I'm holding uh. you. I'm like, mm, yep. Uh, so maybe you're saving these for, for maybe your kids one day can play with daddy. God bless, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, this is your dad. Only look, don't touch. <laughs> Pardon me, uh, a very uh, private question, but I guess a lot of uh, women would be interested. Is there any Mrs. Janewska? Oh, probably, yes, yeah, somewhere in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hopes up. <laughs> Casting is open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can send your inquiries, you know, to our address and we will give it to staff. Does that happen that sometimes you are like in a bad mood and, and, uh, and tr almost giving up on anyth anything and, uh, and you just go and, and look for the nice messages about you, like all those how, how great you are and all those fun art things. Uh, does, does that help you? It does help, of course, <laughs> you know, your fast support always helps, but I find um, different ways to deal with, you know, the dark times. Mm -hmm. uh, I ride a motorcycle and that gives me a lot of freedom. So when I feel down, I'm like, I need to switch off from the world. And, you know, I get on my iron horse, we become one and, you know, mm -hmm. go and chase the sun. So this is how I, you know, spend time in nature, go out camping, sleep mm -hmm. out in the wild for a couple of days. You know, this is my kind of escape to recharge. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people who do follow what's being written, commented, and it's more, it does more damage than it helps. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you read the good things, but then you get hit by yeah. the, the bad things. Yeah. And I used to care, but, you know, with time, you mm -hmm. know, I got, I got immune. I don't care. I mean, you know, if it's... Um, 
like criticism which makes sense. For example, oh, you could have acted better in this or done whatever in a better way, yes. But you know, people saying, oh, you know, one of your ears is uh, a bit sunburned and the other one is whatever, you know, just making up stuff. That mm -hmm. Just to hurt you, basically. Just to, yeah. you know, spill their um, negative energy yeah. onto someone. Yeah. You need to, I mean, becoming popular uh, in any sphere, you know, an artist, a singer, or whatever, actor, you need to be prepared for, um, you know, trolls. Mm. This is why they're called trolls. Yeah. Because that's what they do, you know, they want to create, you know, negativity and make you feel bad. And, you know, you take that energy and turn it into positive. <laughs> yeah, so I don't really, I don't pay attention, you know, people can have whatever opinion they want. If you were able to alter the scenes or, or add something to, to the scenes that you were doing or you had to have stick by the script? Oh, we were allowed to have an opinion and this was something I really liked uh, in Mike, you know, being the director. Um, I actually changed a bit of one scene. Uh, you know, when Cedric dies in the maze and then we have this sad funeral kind of scene, they wanted us to wear hats. And this is, you know, disrespectful to me. I mean, you would take the hat off. But costume department insisted us having the hats. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to go speak to Mike. So I went to Mike and I explained to him that, you know, Durmstrang would take the hats off in respect to, you know, Cedric. So he went on and said, you know, take the hats off. I want to see the scene without hats. And he liked it and he kept that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we were allowed to improvise and bring stuff from our own, uh, which I think made the movie so much more real. Mm -hmm. If you could play any other character than Victor Crumb, uh, who would that be? Uh, Harry. Ah. <laughs> Lead character in a big franchise. <laughs> Dream job. How, on, on a scale from one to ten, how fun it was to fly in the movie? On the broomstick. On the broomstick, yeah. Minus ten. <laughs> Uh, the reason for that is during our time, the broomsticks had a very small and stiff seat. So we would be tied to the broomstick on a mechanical arm and, you know, we would have to sit on that thing for hours. And the boys in this room will know. <laughs> Not the most comfortable thing, so you would technically have to relearn how to walk after that. <laughs> Uh, so not, not, not very comfortable. After we complained, you know, for the next films, they actually molded everyone's bum oh. into a seat. <laughs> so they had it really comfortable, but for us it was, uh, yeah. Well, but this is not your, your first time in Czech Republic, because actually you, you shot a movie in Prague, right? Uh, we did, yes. We shot Hostel 2. Mm -hmm. And I was based uh, right off the square uh, in Prague. And, the uh, square with the clock? Yes, the square with the clock and, you know, the, the bridge and all of it. So I spent about three months in an apartment. Uh, had a wonderful time. Oh, and what was your role in, in the movie? I, well, we have some kids uh, here, yes. And it was a horror movie, so maybe not so much gruesome detail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you die a gruesome death in that movie? I got eaten alive, Whoa. which is not so gross. Imagine a, a very tasty steak. Uh, but yeah, I was honored. Actually, I got eaten by one of the biggest horror movie directors. He was a guest uh, in the movie and Eli was super excited. And when he was telling me, oh, he's going to be... Um, I need to be careful here. Uh, slicing a good steak from your foot, you know, from your leg. Uh, and, you know, it was exciting times. So my role was, uh, <laughs> my role was a, a mislead. I had to throw off the audience so they wouldn't know whether I was a good guy or a part of the, the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Funny role. I yeah, and it was time. called Miroslav, is that right? Miroslav, yes. Yeah, that's so funny because you are Stanislav. Both of them are Czech names, kind of, you know. By the way, do you know in Czech Republic how we would call you usually by your house name? You wouldn't be called Stanislav or Stan, but you would be Standa. Uh, Standa. Standa, yeah. Okay. Stan, I, I guess Standa Krum we will call that's you. That's a yeah. new one. Uh, <laughs> I know uh, I've been called Stas, Stani, Stan, Standa now. <laughs> Uh, Stasik, all sorts oh, of names. So, yeah. Wonderful. 
And uh, well, very few last quick Harry Potter questions. Uh, in which uh, house do you think you personally stand would belong? I've done the test twice and two times I was put in Slytherin. Oh, uh, so yeah, Slytherin. I'm Slytherin too. It's the Slytherins best. Are, yeah, I'm very happy with Slytherins, but you know, I guess along really well with Hufflepuffs. Mm -hmm. uh, I find them really funny, you know, very super passionate all around the world and they all, you know, super, super nice people. So I'd be very happy. Any house would be good. Mm -hmm. But if I have to be honest, you know, I will stay true to Durmstrang. <laughs> That's where I belong. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Uh, well, by the way, can you imagine those those posh kids from Hogwarts like doing a student exchange uh, in oh, Durmstrang? How, how long would they last? They would get changed completely <laughs> in Durmstrang. Um, is there any spell or like potion or anything from the Harry Potter world that you would love to have in real life? Uh, well, I would love to have my wand. Mm -hmm. With everything. Oh, that's that a <laughs> pretty smart ass <laughs> answer because then you can do all the spells. I can do all the spells, and mm -hmm. I'm from Durmstrang, so there is no forbidden spells. Oh, that's right. You know, in Hogwarts, so you cannot do this, and you cannot do dark. Oh, well, we can. Yeah, but it has dark side because y you've experienced two of the unforgivable curses yourself. Yeah, but I've lived through them, so it's not yeah, a big deal. Well, you yeah, know. That, that was the last one that didn't happen, luckily. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Harry Potter has some, to say something about, about well, this. <laughs> and the, the very last question, uh, what do you think about the, the upcoming uh, TV series? And now, when you are older and then you possibly wouldn't be able to play Victor Crumb again, is there any of the adult characters that you'd like to play? Um, maybe, you know, uh, one of the, the teachers, uh, probably, you know, Quidditch, Dark <laughs> Arts or something, you know, it'd be very cool to, to have Victor Crumb back. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a headmaster of Durmstrang or something. Mm -hmm. I think it might be a little too soon to do a reboot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, according to what I've heard and read, um, you know, by, by Harry Potter fans, like diehard fans, yeah. you know, they think it's a bit too soon to mm -hmm. do a reboot. But I think it's exciting because a TV series will give you a lot more time to see all the stuff that we didn't see, mm -hmm. you know, from the books. No more deleted scenes. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see, I mean, for me personally, to see a new Hermione, mm -hmm. a new Crumb, mm -hmm. a new Harry, you know, all, uh, you know, I would have loved to have seen, you know, um, origins of Dumbledore or, you know, yeah. uh, development of, you know, what is Durmstrang? How did they form? Mm -hmm. What do they do? You know, yeah. do they have houses? Do they... Mm -hmm. What are they? You know, mm -hmm. villas and the history. Mm -hmm. We know that Victor Crumb's grandfather went to Durmstrang. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this will go all the way back to, yeah. you know, him being a student. Was, yeah, 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 they yeah. were students. So maybe uh -huh. they had history. So oh. a lot of stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, people want to find out about. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, would have been very interesting to, mm -hmm. to do before yeah. uh, an actual reboot of the main mm -hmm. story. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We will see. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, uh, Peeves, for example, you know, mm -hmm. being brought and all the elves that you, we weren't able to see and, you know, all these other characters. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting, I mean, to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope it will be at least uh, as interesting as was this interview. Thank you so much Thank for coming much. and, and for your very magical presence. Thank you very much for having me.